All right, this is my update on the cicada situation here in Western Maryland. Now, I did a video, it's been over a month ago, where I showed you where the cicadas, the 17-year cicadas, are starting to come out of the ground and getting ready to do their thing. Now, the 17-year cicada gets that name because it only comes out of the ground once every 17 years. It lives underground as a little white, grubby-looking thing for 17 years, feeding on the roots of uh, trees and shrubs and stuff like that. But this is the year they come out and they're taking their sweet time. Although, if you listen, you can actually hear some in the distance. These are the very first ones I've heard this year. I'm gonna be quiet for a second and I might amplify the sound a little bit, but just listen and say, like, you'll hear it's like a noise off in the distance. I'll be quiet, listen, shh. Now I know those are cicadas because I've heard them before but they're not close by. Those are actually probably over in West Virginia, just across the river. In the last video I made a month ago, I, you know, I showed you where they first came out and they built these like little chimneys or what they call turrets, um, where they you are know, preparing to emerge. It's been over a month since I saw those. I'm gonna, let me run a quick video clip right now, because I know a lot of you guys probably haven't seen that uh, video. So just give me a minute and watch this. Yeah, there they are. Full hoodoo village. Uh, it's like a ho little hoodoo village now. I think there's going to be a million of those things. Look at them. Look at those. There's a million of them in there. What do you think it could possibly be? Now, I've never seen those before, but I know what they are. How do you know what they are? Look. You'll know as soon as I lift this up. The Hoodoo Village. Looky. Are they cicadas? Cicadas! Interesting thing about those little chimneys is that I was reading that not all the cicadas do that. Now there's a ton of them there. There's a couple spots in the woods where I've seen them, but like where I'm standing, they never made those. Uh, they never made those turrets. This is my little woods pond. I made that for frogs. It's a load of the snapping turtles for some reason, uh, but I'm going to make it a little bit bigger, and I'm kind of digging it out, getting down to the clay, because uh, the clay will hold the water. They're getting louder. Listen. Yeah, there's some more. Those are closer. The closer ones will go I hear that now. All right, but anyway, so I'm making a pond, but look where I have been driving my little tractor and you'll see a bunch of holes. See all those holes? That's where the cicadas are getting ready to come out. They've dug up to the surface, been waiting for a month down there for the temperature to get just right. There's a few more. Look, there's one right there. I don't know if he's alive, but now they don't, they come out at night apparently or late evening. All right, so this one doesn't appear to be alive. If you look inside of that little case uh, exoskeleton, there's nothing in it. So he's out flying around somewhere. I have not seen a single. Oh look, there we go. There he is. Look, he's the first one I've seen this year. Awesome, little red-eyed devil. Looky there. So it takes them a while uh, for their bodies to harden up before they start flying and making noise. But that's the very first one I've actually seen. And as I'm looking closer, oh, it goes a deer, look. <laughs> so dust, I don't know where, he must have been up in here or something. See the dust, that's where they kicked up the uh, dust with the hose and they went up that way. Sorry about that. Uh, that's another one of those red-eyed devils. Looky! Oh yeah, I can hear him getting louder as I talk too. Uh, but yeah, so if you look in here, you can see these exoskeletons and they're both hatched. See the hole in it. All right, now these cicadas, they come out about the same time and they think that's triggered by the temperature of the soil. They're saying that once the soil down at eight, eight inches deep hits, and that's where they're waiting. They're all down there waiting right now. It's 64 degrees Fahrenheit. They start to come out and they'll come out pretty fast. It'll be a few dribs and drabs like we're seeing now and hearing now. But I, I suspect within a couple of days, we're going to be inundated with these things. So temperature is a driver for them. Uh, the males will come out first, or m the majority of the population that comes out in the first week will be males. And they think they do that so that um, for the species, they're sacrificing the male population or, or a significant portion of the male population so that when the females come out a week later, um, they can breed and, and lay eggs. As, you know, of course, the males aren't going to be laying the eggs, so you got to protect the females. They're getting louder. I mean, like by the minute. It's really weird, isn't it? 
I, I have a feeling in a couple days it's going to be crazy. Why once every 17 years? Now there's actually a 13 year cicada too. 13, 17, both prime numbers. There's a couple theories as to why scientists think that they do that. And one is that they they choose have chosen a prime number. A prime number has been chosen for them because other predators cannot sync their uh, reproductive cycle and life cycle to match with cicadas. So if there's a predator out there that has a two-year life cycle, uh, that will always be an even number, never an odd number. And again, they're 13 and 17. There's a predator out there with a three-year life cycle. Well, you get three, six, nine, twelve. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. But it's 12 and 15 plus 1 for the cicadas. So a three year life cycle can never match up. Same way with a 4, same way with a 5. So they, that's one theory as to why they do it on those 13 and 17 years. Another theory, and this I just read this um, online, is that it's a racial purity thing. Well, I don't know if it's a race with, a, <laughs> with an insect, but it's a species purity thing where they think that maybe since the Ice Age times that they've evolved in such a way that they want to keep their line, their lineage more pure. Um, so they do these different cycles. That's why you have some 13s and some 17s. I don't know, it sounds kind of like bogus to me, but there is actually, they say that might actually be the reason. They say that the cicadas are related to shrimp. I cannot find anywhere online in a scientific paper that actually spells that out, but if you, Google that, you'll see tons of news articles where they talk about cicadas being somewhat closely related to shrimp. Now, I have read that if you are allergic to shellfish, do not eat cicadas. That they do contain some of the same chemicals. Uh, so you, if you have allergic reactions to uh, mussels, clams, and you know crabs or whatever, don't eat these things, okay? And if you don't have those reactions to shellfish, Eat away. They say that they're delicious, although I've never had them, but I'm going to have some this year. Yeah, those little guys, we're going to, we're going to cook them right up. <laughs> this, is pretty, this is pretty funny because I've actually, I spent like 20 minutes here trying to make this stupid video because I can't remember anything and, you know, I'm just trying to do a bunch of shoots, but it gets loud. It's been getting louder and louder since I've been here. All right, a couple things uh, that I want to uh, clarify. One. You will read and see and hear online and in the news that they're saying, at least my local station is saying uh, that the cicadas are going to attract snakes. So there's going to be snakes everywhere, rattlesnakes, copperheads, copper water moccasins, everything's going to be out here. Um, but that's BS. It's absolutely BS. It's, in fact, it's going to be like the opposite of attracting snakes because there's going to be so many of these things that any snake that's just sitting there anywhere in the woods are going to be having them fly in their face constantly and they're going to be constantly full for the next month. So any snakes that are going to be around are going to be hiding in the bushes digesting their most recent cicada meal. So that's a bunch of bunk. I'm just telling you that right now, in my opinion. I'm also reading in mainly uh, uh, scientific journals that the cicada, well, they won't, ah, there goes one. First one I've seen flying. He's such a cutie. I bet he tastes good too. Uh, that the cicadas uh, don't hurt, well, well, they don't sting and they usually don't bite. Uh, I think I might have had one bite, bite me one time, but I, very minor and they don't sting because uh, they don't even eat. They'll be out here flying around for weeks or up to a month and they don't even eat because they've been eating for 17 years. They're pretty freaking full. They just have one thing on their mind. All right, so they don't bite, they don't sting. Where was I going with this, guys? Something very, very important. All right, I remember, okay, although the scientific journals are saying they don't sting and may bite a little bit, they're also saying they don't really do a lot of damage to um, foliage, trees, shrubs, and stuff like that. But I'm gonna tell you, they do a lot of damage to trees, shrubs, and foliage. Uh, when we look at these woods a month from now, when they're all said and done and they're, they're finished, they're going to look a lot different. Because what happens is the female comes out, and somehow she has something on her that can actually cut slices in trees. I'm not talking like nice little neat surgical slices. I'm talking like, like you took a chainsaw to it. So these trees all we here, all around us, will be covered with these big gashes down through the branches in the tree trunks. So if you have shrubs or trees that you want to protect from these guys, uh, especially if they're smaller, get them protected somehow. Get like mesh on them or whatever. Uh, big trees can, I mean, I don't think they're gonna hurt, they don't hurt the big trees, but there'll be thousands of little limbs up here that will be broken and dead 
by the end of summer. Um, in fact, they say that because they damage so many of these small limbs up in these trees, like there's hickory trees all around here and, and uh, oak trees, that the squirrels and other things that depend on the nuts to survive will have a very bad winter coming up because the trees are not going to be able to produce the acorns and uh, hickory nuts and things because the branches will be dead. So sorry about that squirrels and turkeys and all you guys, but I think you're going to have a rough winter. Uh, so it's going to be it's going to be a bad time for your belly. And one other thing that I want to make sure you guys understand that there is a cicada type of cicada that comes out every year big green cicadas and they make this kind of a similar noise but it's more I think melodic um, it's kind of noise you hear off in the woods in the distance you hear it on the hottest laziest haziest days of summer and it's just a beautiful sound to fall asleep to in your hammock these guys are a little more like something from outer space and you'll understand when you hear them we're going to uh come back out in about a week and uh, do another follow-up video where when the insects are flying everywhere making tons of noise it's going to be glorious to witness this miracle of nature uh so until then i hope you watch some of my other videos and don't forget to give them a like and subscribe tell your friends <laughs> to subscribe to the aqua chigger <laughs> so we'll see you on the next cicada video in one week it's gonna be loud and it's gonna be glorious. Mother Earth, you are my lady, my big round baby. I'll rock you until I go to sleep. She don't care if you're dying or if you're living or somewhere in between. Mother Earth, you are my lady.